First, you start off with a half a cup of mayonnaise, a quarter cup of milk, a quarter cup of buttermilk. I'll wait till you catch up. Sorry. I went too fast on that one. I'll repeat. Half a cup of mayonnaise, quarter cup of milk, quarter cup of buttermilk, one third cup of granulated sugar, one teaspoon of salt, a quarter teaspoon of ground black pepper. I'll wait for you. Catch up with me again. All right. One and one half tablespoon of white or apple cider vinegar, two and a half tablespoons of lemon juice. See, unlike when you see it on TV, they rattle these off so fast, you, you can no way in, on this green earth get it. I'll slow down so you can keep up with me. We need four cups of shredded, then diced cabbage. Four cups shredded, then diced cabbage, cabbage and about a half of a medium head. That's, that's about half of a medium head of, uh, of cabbage. Uh, one medium carrot. Well, who knows what a medium carrot is? I have no idea, but it's one medium carrot and a quarter medium yellow onion messed up. I mean, you chopped the heck out of that thing. All right. So the instructions are very simple. You shred the, shred the cabbage and carrots and, and dice finely. You mix all the vegetables in a large mixing bowl. In a medium mixing bowl, you whisk together the dressing ingredients. Then you just pour over the veggies and stir all with a wooden spoon. Why would a wooden spoon? I don't know, but they said it was with a wooden spoon. You cover the bowl with saran wrap, or thereof, and then place it in the refrigerator for at least four hours, preferably overnight. And just before you serve it, what do you do? Stir it again. So there you go. There's that thing. And it goes great. And I had the the uh, chicken recipe that goes along with it. It's good good to uh, cook with chicken. And I don't have it here in front of me. I don't know where it went. It's probably probably in the back of some. Let me see. Let's see if it's here. Let's see. It's right here. This is live radio, folks. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look for it right here and see if it's in, in one of my other, in the back of one of the, uh, when it came out of the printer. Because the chicken, chicken's not hard to cook. The, the big thing is always have a chicken thermometer. And make sure the chicken is at least 165 degrees Fahrenheit, so you know it's cooked all the way through. And when you stick it with the with the thermometer, always go to the thickest part of the chicken, so you know it's cooked all the way through. But they say, and the reason I was looking for this is, I do not have the recipe for marinating it. But they say marinate it. <clears throat> excuse me. Try to marinate it overnight rather than just for an hour or two because it absorbs it absorbs into the chicken. Now, I can talk about chicken cordon bleu very very quickly. Chicken cordon bleu is you get a breast chicken, you butterfly it, which means you slice it almost all the way in half and you open it up. Then you get a nice piece of ham. Not a thick ham, but a nice piece of sliced ham where it fits over both sides of the of the Butterfly chicken breast. Now, I personally, I like provolone, but you can lose, use, usually use Swiss cheese. But you put your cheese of your choice there. Then you close it. You put, a, you put a toothpick through it. Then you put it in an egg wash, and you're seasoning. Now, I, I use Italian seasoned breadcrumbs for mine. You put it on. Then you put it in the skillet, and you cook it on one side for about three or four minutes. Cook it on the other side of three or four minutes. Then you take the whole chicken there. Now it's all it's all breaded. It's it's got a little crispness on either side. Then you get it on a nice cooking sheet pan and you put it in the oven for about forty minutes at three fifty or a little less than, than forty minutes, maybe. I put it in for forty minutes, but you can put it less, you know. You gauge it as you look at it. Again, stick it with that thermometer, make sure it's done. And there you have your chicken cordon bleu. And they come out delicious. Of course, don't forget to pull the toothpicks out, you know. <laughs> no, just, you know, just saying, just saying, you know, just saying things like that, you know. We'll be right back with some more foolishness right after this. You get the best deals when you shop early, and that's doubly important on camellias at Bob Wines Camellia Gardens. This week, Bob announces his first and best sale of the year. 
on famous heirloom camellias. You can buy gorgeous early blooming Bonanza camellias, normally selling for $29.99 for just $12.99. Yes, that's less than half price, but supplies are limited. And say, if you're looking for color that'll last all winter long, then check this out. Mix or match these winter hardy annuals, pansies, petunias, snapdragon, stock, dianthus, and more. You'll get a flat of 18 for just $19.99. A new shipment of veggies? They just arrived and they're still just $3.99 in the jumbo four-pack at Bob Wines Camellia Gardens. Southeast 38th Street, Ocala, open till 4 Monday through Friday, 3 on Saturdays, in the same blooming place since 1952. Career Source, Citrus, Levy, Marion, brings together business and community partners, economic development leaders, and educational providers to connect employers with qualified skilled talent and job seekers with employment and career development opportunities. Tune in the first Wednesday of each month at 9.30 to Career Source, Citrus Levy Marion, and learn how they can help you. Gene Powell Pasture Mowing, 352-629-2440. In addition to our pasture mowing and tractor services, including zero-turn mowers for your fence line finish, we also offer rototilling and fence row spraying. We are family-owned and operated, licensed and insured, and farm ready. Powell Gene, G-E-N-E, at yahoo.com. 352-629-2440. Gene Powell Pasture Mowing, 352-629-2440. Gene is a proud United States veteran. Veterans Helping Veterans USA. Call 352-433-2320. We help veterans and their families with limited financial assistance, counseling, employment referrals, and a food and clothing bank. You can help in making a huge difference in the veterans' lives we serve by donating food, clothing, household items, or direct financial assistance. All donations are tax deductible. Veterans Helping Veterans USA. 352-433-2320. Thank you for your attention and God bless America. When it really counts, depend on the source for the latest weather updates, keeping you ahead of the storm. 96.3 FM, 1370 AM, The Source. Today will be partly sunny and less humid with a high of 79 to 83. Clear to partly cloudy skies tonight, low 60 to 72. Then Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, all will be mostly sunny. Should be nice days, high Saturday, 82 to 86. High Sunday, 86 to 88. High Monday, 73 to 78. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm Holly Holdren. Welcome to Ocala Talks. This is Big Joe here sitting in for Tom Schmitz, holding the seat down. That's a lot of seat to hold down. Of course, Tom stands up all the time for the three hours. Not me, no, no, no. Not with my back problems. I sit down all the time. Welcome back. Remember, it's Friday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like I have to tell you that. It's Friday. So, the weekend's upon us just about. Don't forget. At 2 a.m. in the morning on Sunday morning, well, before you go to bed, uh, Saturday night before you go to bed, turn all your clocks back so you're not late or early for when you got to do whatever you have to do, you know. You'll be early, that's right. Yeah, if you turn it back, you'll be early, but that's okay. So don't don't forget to do that. You'll be all set. It's about, let's see, let's see what the temperature is out there right now. Let's see what we're up to here. Let's bring it up here and, no, this can't be right. No, 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 no. Wow. According to this thing, it went down. It's 57 degrees. <laughs> and the handy-dandy handy dandy, uh, uh, thing in front. Yeah, 57 right now. So we're going to be a high of 75 today. Zero chance of precipitation. So we go out there, and like, like we say every Tuesday, if you listen in between 9 and 10, we have In the Garden with uh, Carol Ann Baldwin, and she'll come in here, and she'll talk about different gardening tips and what have you, and just go on there and... <clears throat> Help yourself, and don't forget to stop at Bob Wines Community Gardens and Nursery, where you get all your gardening needs. So you stop there today. They're open until about four o'clock today, I think nine to four, and uh, stop in there today, and they'll uh, they'll set you up with all the stuff. You plant a tree and everything. Remember, if you're going to dig in the yard, <laughs> really, really deep, always get call that it was eight one one that number there. Make sure that uh, you're not going to hit anything and go 
We don't like fried people. Well, today we've got an interesting day. We've got a couple of interviews coming up at 9.05. We've got uh, Mary Lynn Maggard, uh is a Republican member of the Florida House of Representatives, uh, representing the 82nd District, which includes most of Martin County and some parts of northern Palm Beach County. She will be discussing a new conservative fund. So that's going to be, that's going to be, she'll be at 905 to 915. Another interview at 935 today, a renowned smart shopper journalist discussing by Black Friday, October 30th, which is today, through November 27th. There we go. That's Mr. Bodge. I'll be, ta- I'll be talking to him there. And then at 1005, Ryan Chamberlain will be discussing Amendment 2, and he'll be coming here live in the studio, so he's not a call, and he'll be actually live. And then we're, we're done with him, and it's another 10-minute interview. At 10.35, we have Ocala Magazine that comes in here, and we talk about all the, all the different articles uh, and things that are going on in Ocala. And uh, last, last week, we had uh, Philip Glassman in there uh, talking to Tom. So those are, those are things that are coming up. We try to keep you informed on different things because we are Ocala, and we take care of Marion County, about 350,000 people. Plus, uh, you can listen to us on YouTube if I hit the right buttons at the right time. Uh, and I'm, I am trying. It'll, it'll, it'll get there. It'll get there. But you could, if you're listening, listen to me on YouTube, you will. You won't see my pictures. I don't like to be on camera. So I can, you know, I do, I can do a, a quick, here I am, now I'm gone. Okay, there we go. That was it. <laughs> Everybody says I'm a sick individual. I don't think out of the box. There's no box with me. Forget about it. It's not going to happen. Anyway, there's some uh, aluminum foil hacks that are improving people's daily lives. And they're painfully easy to do. It's no longer just for wrapping kids' sandwiches or, of course, making some hats so that Martians can't find you. Homeowners are raving over these aluminum foil hacks, easy to do and practical for everyday use. These helpful tips are guaranteed to make your life easier, whether it's better to clean your frying pan or a fun new method to serve food and to impress your friends in the process. Who knew Tim Foil could be so inventive? So here we go. We've got a little bit of time, so we're keeping your grill clean. We'll start off with number one. If there's one thing that many people love after a long week, it's a well-cooked barbecue. No kidding. But anyone who enjoyed a Sunday night afternoon grilling hamburgers and steaks and brockworts and so forth and so on knows how hard it can be to clean the grill afterwards. While wrapping your food in tinfoil can be one method to prevent grime, it's also not very sustainable. However, there's a much more effective thing you can do, one that is extremely easy as well. When you're done grilling, all you have to do is crumble up a sheet of aluminum foil and use it to scrape the grill. Presto, changeo, good as new. That's an easy one. And here's, now this this one's a little strange. I've never tried it. The quickest way to iron clothes. We've all been there. You know, in that position where we've been trying to get dressed for a fancy event, but that awkward button-down shirt you want to wear is hopelessly wrinkled. The only problem is there isn't enough time to iron it. Thankfully, we've got a solution right here in my hands. First, take a long sheet of aluminum foil and place it on the ironing board. Second, cover the foil with a towel or another type of safe covering that you plan to put on your clothes on. The aluminum foil will reflect the heat instead of absorbing it, and your clothes will lose their wrinkles much faster. There you go. I didn't think about that one. Never tried that one. Keeping your snacks fresh. Well, reusable, resealable bags are useful, but sometimes we don't have them at our disposal. There's a way to essentially plastic seal your bag, all with the help of aluminum foil. Once you've already gotten everything you need from the bag, here's what you need to do. Take a strip of aluminum foil and place it right over the opening of the bag while flattening it the way, you know, you want to close it. Then you must heat the foil with an iron on top of the opening, just slightly enough to create a seal. Obviously, you must be careful that you don't overheat it, but done right, your food will be fresh as it ever was. Now, these little, these little, these are little ditties, you know. Uh, I, a lot of them are, are common sense ones. Common sense ones. Now, if you have a 
a frying pan and nonstick. This is this is for like a stainless steel pan, or a, 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 what do you call it? A iron skillet. Clean your frying pan. If you're someone who spends a lot of time in the kitchen, chances are you've dealt with your chance, your, your share of unwanted gook on your pans and your pots. It's natural to grind to accumulate over time. There's a multiple ways to deal with it. One, using dishwasher soap and a sponge. Probably things to use, but sometimes they don't do everything. For the extra hard spots on your pan that you can barely make a dent in, aluminum foil can actually be very helpful. Crumple it up the foil, give those pestering coats of grime a whirl, and you'll see who's boss soon enough. <laughs> and this other one is, if you have batteries, and it's incredibly frustrating when a battery unexpectedly dies on us. It's no big deal when you have batteries lying around. But some of us simply aren't that lucky. However, if that happens and smaller batteries happen to be in the vicinity, this is the perfect solution. With the help of aluminum foil, you can basically transform your small battery, such as a AAA one, into a bigger one that fits, such as a AA. Simply take a small piece of a foil and crumple it up so that it fills in the excess space where the battery would go, which makes the smaller battery, which isn't big enough, to fit. If it's done right, the electrical signal or its current should be good to go. Because if you look at it, it's 1.5 volts for AAA or 1.5 1. volts volts for AA. They're just different size batteries for the for the objects that they're you know they're they're going into. So the aluminum foil just takes up the space. Pretty good, huh? Now, with the kids, you're having fun. It's Halloween. You're going to make uh, cupcakes there, but you don't want them to hit each other. What do you do? You make little boxes at the bottom where the cupcakes sit in their little for transportation. That way the cupcakes can't hit to, hit each other, and the little square at the bottom will co- stop them from hitting each other. In other words, the social distancing for uh, cupcakes. Pretty good? Not bad. Another thing is you want to make a heart shape. Let's say Valentine's Day, or you want to make a heart shape or any kind of shape, but you don't want to go out and spend six, seven dollars for a baking pan that you might use once a year. So what do you do? You shape it out of aluminum foil. You shape it out, make the make the make the sides and everything. Spray it down with the with the that nonstick spray stuff, you know, and just pour it in there. Put it on a sheet pan and bake away, and there you go. And you're all set. You don't have to worry about it, and you customize your own cake. Uh, preventing dryer static, aluminum foil can obviously provide all kinds of assistance in the kitchen, but it's also helpful in the laundry room as well. For those of us who do laundry quite frequently, we're all aware of the annoying dryer static effect that can be seen on the clothes at the end. One way to deal with this, the issue is by using dryer sheets, but they're not always around. Of course, you can actually use aluminum foil instead. Roll up a few pieces of aluminum into balls and make sure that they're compressed smoothly enough so there are no sharp edges. When they're ready to go, toss them in the dryer before turning it on and get rid of that annoying static in the attic. Oh, my goodness. See, that's just a couple of things. We've got more little ditties that are coming up uh, later on in the morning. It's 19. But, uh, oh, that one, that was cute. That came in, in, that, they came, that came in unexpectedly. But... Um, We'll be we'll be having more stuff coming up. Don't worry about it. And we, like I said, the interview is at 9:05, and we'll be right back in about ooh, about four or five minutes, right after the news. Thank you. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios. This is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. <laughs> 